the depth, length, breadth, and height of the love of Christ? No, I couldn't find. The love of God cannot just be described. It has to be experienced. For we have experienced the love, and so we worship. Hello there, you're once more welcome to the Glory Realm Devotion. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. There's joy coming your way. This is a beautiful day to, to reach out to the Lord and love the Lord. Serve Him with gladness, serve Him with everything you have got. Find some time to praise Him, I mean, from your own lips. It is not enough to play it from some device or you know playing some CDs sing out to the Lord let him hear your own voice give him the praise that is due unto him and you know what don't be shy to express your love for him by giving also give unto the Lord be a blessing to some people because you know when you do that you make a lot of difference in many lives and you cause heaven to rejoice hallelujah you're welcome once more we've been studying the book of john the gospel of john and now we are in chapter number 16 and it's been amazing what the lord is opening our eyes to see yesterday we were looking at chapter 16 and verse number five and you know verse number five jesus said to them you've not asked me you know where are you going and you know sometimes when you look at some passages of scripture if you do not read carefully, you're going to feel that there's contradiction or something wrong somewhere because in chapter number 13, verse 36, Peter has actually asked, where are you going? And there Jesus said, where I'm going, you cannot come now, but afterwards you're going to come. So what's the difference? How come Jesus is saying, you've not said, ask me, where are you going? Now, those two are two different experiences. The first where in chapter number 13, Jesus was talking about to the cross, going to the cross. And that Peter does not have the capacity to face the cross, you know. And Peter was like, I'm ready. I'm going to die for you. Jesus said, this night before the cock crows, twice you would have denied me three times. And you know, that was exactly what happened. And Jesus, in the other way, was talking about heaven because in chapter 14, he brought in the subject of he going to heaven. Said, in my father's house. Obviously, that is not on the earth realm here in my father's house where he came from in heaven. Now, Peter and all others, you know, were promised a place in heaven. And he said this concerning everyone who believes also. And you know what? In chapter 16, he was talking about something new and they have not asked him, where is this place? And so, you know, they were unable to ask him because they are not getting, you know, facing the reality of the fact that he is going to leave them because he has told them now that when he is taken out of the scene, when he is no longer there, people are going to focus on the disciples and they are going to hate them, all right? And he told them they are going to hate them. And if you look at that, you're going to see it you know, in number of scriptures where he, he has talked about that in chapter number 15 and now in chapter number 16, all right? And then in verse number 6, he says, But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts, taking complete possession of them, all right? When sorrow fills somebody heart, somebody's heart and take complete possession, that is really deep and serious sorrow. It can be serious depression. Jesus saw how sorrow has gripped them. And then he said to them in verse number seven, however, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable 
good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Advocate, Intercessor, Strengthener, Standby will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. I love the emphasis on close fellowship. Now Jesus told them earlier on that the spirit that is with them shall be in them. So as long as Jesus is still on the scene, the dispensation of the Holy Spirit is not unfolded. But after he was taken away, the Holy Spirit came as a comforter, counselor, intercessor, strengthener, standby, one who stand by us and be with us. Now he said, you're going to have a closer fellowship. So the going of Jesus back to where he came from heaven, his father's house, is good news for us is that we should rejoice because this is going to give us the opportunity to have a close fellowship, intimate relationship with the personality of the Holy Spirit. He went on to say in verse number eight, and when he comes, he will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness, uprightness of heart and right standing with God and about judgment, about sin, because they do not believe in me, trust in, rely on, and adhere to me. About righteousness, uprightness of heart and right standing with God, because I go to my Father and you will see me no longer. Now, Jesus was emphasizing between verse 8 and verse number 10 that, you know, when he is taken away, this is going to be a reality. Now, he is talking about a close fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, the personality of the Holy Spirit walking with us will convict the world of sin. And he is going to convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness. In other words, the personality of the Holy Spirit in our lives is going to make it obvious that it is possible to live a life of righteousness. And because we, his children, the children of God, followers of Jesus, with the personality of the Holy Spirit in us, we'll be able to live a life free from the bondage of sin. But with the help of the Holy Spirit strengthening us on the inside, we will be able to live such holy and righteous life that is going to convict the world that it is possible to live for God. And because of that, you know, the world will realize they have no excuse. And because we are living that life, they're also going to realize that there's going to be judgment. Because if we are all living the same way, then nobody is going to be afraid of being judged. In fact, part of the reason why the people of the world, I mean, unbelievers, non-Christians are hostile to Christians is because it's a reminder of judgment that is to come. And I want you to take a good look at that, about that in, uh, in verse number uh, 11. It says about judgment because the ruler, evil genius, prince of this world, Satan is judged and condemned and sentenced already and sentence already is passed upon him. And then he said, I have still many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them or to take them upon you or to grasp them now. So Jesus closed it up. Now, he said, even the sheaf of evil 
the devil himself has been sentenced already. The devil himself has been judged, condemned already. And so if the prince of this world is judged, everyone with him, they are also in trouble, they are judged. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. I don't want you to be judged. I want you to live a life of righteousness and enjoy the blessings and glory of God. So get out of sin, get out of darkness, get out of evil and give your life to Jesus and he will help you to live the righteous life. Till I come your way tomorrow by the grace of God, I'm Ego Louis Yegbibru. God bless you.